Um, so yeah, my name is Adam Little, uh, New Belgium Brewing. I've been at New Belgium, which I guess, depending on what list you're looking at, very controversial. We're the third or fourth largest craft brewery in the United States. Um, and uh, we've been partners with Dell for a really long time before uh, VX Rail. Um, but yeah, that's, that's us in a nutshell here. I have, I think, a name slide. Yep. And uh, so I guess our journey with VX Rail, right, we were really looking for um, the opportunity to deploy a scalable and automated solution. Um, a little bit of background on our brewery. We have a couple different sites. Um, production facility in Fort Collins that's been around since the 90s. Um, we built a production facility on the East Coast, Asheville, North Carolina in 2015. And that was built on a uh, brownfield site. So we had to revitalize that and put in a lot of uh, stuff that we're known for. Solar panels and smart energy and all those cool things that craft breweries do. So we kind of put together this list once we uh, moved on to two breweries of enterprise site, right? We needed to have some sort of a third site that would keep both breweries up and running, right? So there was never a situation where, say, Fort Collins was down, we couldn't brew in Asheville. So we started to build this list of requirements, right? We wanted it to be um, pretty well automated. We wanted it to be easy to administer, uh, remote management, uh, scalable for growth, all flash, and we needed a trusted partner for it. So um, that was our short list. Um, we initially engaged with a private cloud offering from somebody here in Denver. And uh, we quickly learned that that had its own set of challenges. Like we, we weren't driving uh, when to do security updates and all of those things. So um, that's when we decided, should we look at public cloud? Should we look at deploying our own hardware down there? And I have this slide left in here because I think this is a, an important talking point, right? Lots of times folks want um, that cloud level delivery, right? They want to be able to deploy apps quickly. They want to be able to deploy VMs quickly. And I think lots of times when you compare on-premise hardware to the clouds, um, do you get that warm and fuzzy, right? You get that cheap pricing for a cloud. Oh, we can save you so much money in the first two or three years. What we did is took a step back and said, let's look at total five year, right? That's our hardware refresh cycle. What would it cost to run our current workloads at one of these sites in the cloud? And this chart can kind of just break down that. This is an estimated per site. Um, what it would cost us to run it at our current MSP that was a private cloud offering versus like Google Cloud and Azure, I think are the two that we have on here. Um, so you can see obviously VxRail is much cheaper from a TCO, um, but that is the comparison there, right? Is do we, do we trust the solution enough for it to be easy and simple delivery with HCI to be comparable to an Azure or a cloud or something like that, uh, Google Cloud? So that's when we decided we'll go ahead and do a POC on this. So this is the first VX rail that we deployed about five years ago. And this has now been relegated to our BCDR target. Um, but we have four E460F nodes, um, all flash, only uh, 40 terabytes, but you know, 10, 40 gig switching down there. Um, and so then uh, when we had a good experience with that, right, the first thing like any good infrastructure person would do, right, is you hear, you hear all these promises, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. It's going to be scalable. It's going to be scripted. Um, you know, you can't help but go, okay, we'll see, right? I want to try it myself. So our first uh, cluster update was, uh, you know, as anyone would do, 24-7 operation, right? We try to do it as late as we can, hope that everything goes as smooth as we can. And the first update we did was shocking, right? To watch the uh, the scripting and automation go through and update disk firmware, update iDRAC firmware, put you know hosts in the maintenance mode, update them, reboot them one at a time. Um, so that first set of updates we did, I think probably my entire team of five or six were like, "Wow, like we just let's see how this goes, right? Let's see if it's really as automated as they say it is." Um, so it was. Spoiler alert. And uh, so our next uh, VX rail update we did to it, it turned into, okay, let's try it during the day, right? And make sure it's not disruptive to our workloads. So we did one during the day. And then I think by about update three or four that we were doing to our VX rail, it was literally like, okay, let's start the update and go get some lunch, right? And uh, when we come back, hopefully it'll be done. So that's the level of 
trust we have in this automation. Um, obviously, I don't think we probably walked you through any of that, but there's just definitely like an initial pre-check, right? To check all your accounts, make sure all your nodes are ready for the upgrade that you're going to do. And then it stages it and it rolls through it. So we have had them fail before for VMware related reasons, not necessarily Dell related reasons, but it is nice to let that upgrade roll and then if it fails right it just pauses and rolls back those changes um, the only time we've ever had it fail was in the pre-check phase not in the actual update phase so that was super reassuring um, so anyway this is the first one we deployed denver um, as a was our production site and since then we've added uh, one to uh, Asheville, north carolina i deployed this um, E560F, we needed five um, nodes for the amount of servers we run there to keep the same resiliency. We deployed this in like February of 2020. Um, so that was a great time to be uh, trying to fly out to Asheville with COVID and everything and, and deploy a VX rail, but we got it done. Um, we are just standing up these two now uh, in Fort Collins. So we went uh, P570F, and that is for uh, disk density. You may notice there that this is quite a step up from our other deployments, 150 terabytes of flash storage. And that's mainly just because Fort Collins was the original site, so we just have more services running there. And then this new cluster here in Denver was just deployed recently, and that is replacing the first cluster that you saw. So we will run production on that. And so now our journey has really been standardizing on VxRail at all of our sites. And then what is our next play, right? With VCF and SD-WAN um, really creating true failover groups from different sites and being able to move all of those workloads around. Um, so that I think about covers what I have to uh, to say here. I think obviously we had, we've had we had an excellent experience with VxRail and now having, um, you know, close to, I think uh, 20, 20 some nodes here at different sites. We, uh, we, it's, it's basically become our foundation for MAs of just how um, we, we know we can add nodes, we know we can grow storage and all of the nodes we have. So it's a scalable approach for, for what we may be tasked with next, because you never know. And I think my last side is a QA. So if anyone has any questions about New Belgium, our experience or anything, I'm happy to answer this. I had a quick question from Pietro from Italy. Sure, yeah. Um, how, how many people do you have in your team to manage this infrastructure? And yep. uh, are they fully dedicated to this or they cover also other uh, other infrastructure areas? And how, how much time in percentage managing this infrastructure? Sure, yeah. So um, we uh, at New Belgium, we have a team of just um, service desk and then system administrators and system administrators cover literally everything across the board. Right. So we're all we're all Swiss Army knives of we all have our own technical proficiencies that we're a little better in. But there's complete overlap of all of that. You may have noticed from the first slide that um, my new role is cybersecurity within them. But we're just now getting to that point where there's too much for us to do, right? We can't be a jack of all trades anymore. We have to really specialize on certain things. Um, but infrastructure specifically, right, and managing these clusters, I would say it takes one of our admins maybe 10 to 15 hours um, a month to manage these. It's very hands-off, right? So, you know, it's basically just um, what I have noticed, right, is in, and this is gonna be a little bit of my uh, cybersecurity portion over infrastructure. I grew up doing infrastructure, just recently made that change because we have too much cybersecurity stuff to do. Shock, shocking, right? Everyone's heard that one before, but um, a lot of the hurdles for cybersecurity and keeping your things up to date, right, is it's too much, right? I, I've got too many servers to update. How do I do it? Where do I start? All of those things. So for us, really, we're trying to have that conversation that if we could script infrastructure, right? And we could take that one piece out of it. I'm not worrying about managing VMware updates while I update a SAN, right? So any time that I can save there is more time that I can dedicate to updating servers or you know delivering business value on something else. So that's really where we're trying to focus our time is take out some of the the weeding weeding fair and caring to the uh, the infrastructure part of it. Just have it 
do its own thing. And what we've noticed is it's much easier to do a lot of these smaller updates as they come up rather than pairing one large window where we're going to go from VMware 6.7 to 7.0 and you're like, oh, shoot, I hope this all works as planned, right? Because this is a major update. So that's, I think, really enabled us to be more secure and more up to date with a lot of those too. Because sometimes you just run into, oh, there's this VMware vulnerability. Are we on the right version? I got to look at the matrix. How do I get to that version? With VxRail, it's like, it's approved. There's a new version. Let's let's release it, right? It's a Tuesday. We'll just run it over lunch. It'll take a couple hours to update, but it'll roll through the host. And when we come back, we're good to go. So that's exactly the type of confirmation that I was looking for. And, you know... Uh... When you when you show the slide with the return on investment, you are factoring in also all the time that your your team is saving doing menial uh, maintenance tasks and being able to do a lot of other things that are more important for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's hard to quantify, right? Realistically, but um, you know, just looking at it, I think that's kind of eye opening for a lot of folks because you just get that you know, that comparison of, you know, public cloud versus private cloud. And I think everyone's realizing, right, the, the people that were the first to jump into public cloud, like all in are like, you know, kind of that sticker shock where you're six in public cloud and look at how much this is costing us. Are we getting what we're paying for? Like, what are we paying for? I'm not, you know, I think there's a play for both of those pieces, but just being realistic on what is the total cost, right, of over five years, because a lot of times that is discounted up front, which makes it look very appealing. And then when you're in year five or six, as we were, even with our private provider, it turns into, okay, you know, we're we're paying for every six months where we could buy a new VX rail node, right? It's getting it's getting pretty expensive at this point. And it's just, are we getting that return on that? So that, that's where my team was like, it's easy enough to just if we find infrastructure that's easy enough to maintain and still has that cloud-like approach, why wouldn't we go that route, save money?